All right, YouTube, it's time to address a universal truth, not just within this election, although that's what primarily I'm going to be focusing on, uh, but the often ignored fact, which is exactly what it is, that truth really takes a backseat when you're dealing with human beings to perception. That is, if a group of people perceive something to be true, it doesn't matter how wrong it is. They will hold it to be true. They will eagerly defend that truth. And they will look down on you if you challenge their view. It's very difficult to crack that paradigm. And that's what we're seeing largely in this election. Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton have not put forth any substantive policy proposals in some time. The election has devolved to the point at which most of what they're saying and most of what their campaigns are based around are attacking one another on, let's say, a gutter snipe level. Uh, but this, this dirty politicking, it's partially, I will say this, it's partially the fault of the media because they've made it clear to these candidates that they are more fixated on reporting on their insults of one another and the exciting things, the emotionally charged and policy lacking side of politics, as opposed to, you know, they've got to save their tanking ratings on the TV media, the mainstream media in general. So they're going to report upon the really exciting stuff. For instance, with Trump in Louisiana, I made a video about it earlier. Some people said, oh, well, Trump's only doing this for a photo op. Yeah, he probably is. That's not my point. The point is that it's going to be perceived by the average independent voter who has not yet made up their minds and probably by a significant proportion of soft Hillary support as Trump got involved, did something, whether it made any substantial impact means absolutely nothing. He pledged that he would go down to support him. He made good on that pledge to go down and support him. He made a speech there. He handed things out. Obama, meanwhile, is at Martha's Vineyard. Clinton called in, talked to the governor briefly, and went back to campaigning. The way, it which will, the way in which it will be perceived matters far more than the truth. It doesn't matter if Trump was just doing this for a photo op. It means absolutely nothing. Because the average person is easily taken in by their own perception, even when their perception is completely and utterly wrong. There are a lot of people who will perceive him as being more presidential, more charismatic, more professional, uh, and perhaps more ethical and moral as a result of his actions there than Hillary Clinton. Now then, uh, in a way they are right. It is slightly unorthodox for a presidential candidate, especially one behind in the polls, to take time off of campaigning to go to a state, unless it's their home state where they've held office or lived for a long time, to go do such a thing. Uh, that is a little unorthodox. Trump does, in that count, I guess, score at least a minor ethical victory. Now, in his defense, in all fairness, I think that it's a combination of two things. Of course he's using it as a political photo op. At the same time, though, you're not going to hear any criticism of what he did from, like, Hillary, because that would be seen as, that'd be a disaster for PR. So don't expect to see anything sub uh, significant there. But number two, I think, uh, deep inside, even someone who's like multi-billionaire career politician, multi-billionaire on Trump's side, career politician on Hillary's side, of course, is capable of showing human emotion, let's say. They're still, you know, biological, mortal beings. Unless they happen to be Rockefeller, then they just keep getting their heart replaced every couple of years, or Dick Cheney or something like that. Like, if, uh, if Chelsea Clinton were to, you know, fall and get concussed, fall into a coma, of course Hillary Clinton would be sad about that. You know, it's her daughter. Uh, that sort of thing is unavoidable. Even someone who's otherwise a total cold-hearted bitch is capable of showing human emotion. Uh, but back to the main issue, though. People's perception matters. For instance, Hillary Clinton lies a lot. It's, it's obvious. She does. But even if she weren't a chronic liar, if she actually was generally telling the truth on everything and, and not, you know, covering things up with layer after layer of corruption, the public perception of her as a chronic liar would continue to matter more than the truth of her telling the truth. If Donald Trump is perceived of as being bigoted, now he can overcome this, and I pointed this out, it's easier to overcome than being called a chronic liar because the chronic liar can never give you any definitive proof that they're not lying in giving you the proof. The bigot can just say, oh, well, I stand against bigotry. Here's 
pictures of my black fans or whatever. And Trump's already doing that, by the way. He did that today uh, with regards to his extreme vetting process and saying, oh, I regret some of the things I said. Here's what I actually meant. Uh, is it heartfelt? Well, no, it's political campaigning. It's how a political campaign is run. It doesn't matter if these people tell the truth. But public perception is Trump is a bigot and Trump is, you know, out of touch. He's incoherent and nuts. That's public perception from the average independent voter, the average Clinton fan, many of whom are they're not hardened Clinton supporters. I think a lot of them will abandon her campaign in the end. But right now, they're backing Clinton. They say, well, we don't really like either candidate, but we dislike Clinton less. It's sort of just a continuation of Obama. Better the devil you know than the devil you don't know, I suppose, is the ethos behind the average Clinton supporter at this point. Uh, but public perception also is prone to change. When people tell me, oh, Trump is down three points in the polls, he can never recover from this. Are you nuts? Obama was behind by several points to Romney at several points in the race. He won. Obama was behind McCain briefly. He ended up winning. Ronald Reagan came from a 15-point deficit within two weeks of the election and ended up absolutely crushing Jimmy Carter. So it's not odd for Trump to be behind regardless of whether he wins or loses. It's not odd to see people fluctuate in their support. This is just a testament to the fact that a lot of voters are no longer partisan. That's the real problem for these mainstream candidates. And uh, increasingly, you're going to see a wedge driven be be uh, between the two of them. It's like uh, Gary Johnson. Perception of Gary Johnson uh, among many sort of partisan right-wing voters precludes them from supporting him. Oh, that's that dude that wants to legalize drugs. Well, we can't have that because Jesus. A lot of Clinton supporters, they say, oh, that's that guy who wants less gun control. Well, that's a bad, evil, terrible thing to do. In honesty, if they looked at the objective truth about what he represented fully, a lot of them would probably jump on board his campaign. But perception matters more than truth. What they perceive has been spoon-fed to them by their chosen media of choice. That is, the, the left wing. They pay attention to Salon or Gawker. Or used to pay attention to Gawker, they're going out now. Uh, or MSNBC in the right wing. They read The Blaze or Breitbart or, or watch Fox News or something. Or maybe they take it from Matt Drudge. If they're getting it from Drudge, they're probably a Trump fan most of the time. Uh, that's where they get their perception from. And oftentimes, uh, people have a better breadth of logic, I think, generally, than a lot of people will give them credit for. These, these so-called high-minded individuals that say, oh, the fucking sheeple don't know anything. You're fooling yourself. The average person understands coherence. The average person understands the rudiments of reason and, and logic and all of these things. The one problem, though, the one thing that allows perception to be shaped so easily lies in the faulty premise. That is, that if you create a false premise that you can get to stick, usually it's emotionally charged, like, oh, gun, gun crime's so terrible, the premise is gun crime is horrible and everyone's dying, therefore we must do X, Y, and Z in gun control or something. The premise is wrong. Of course, we're at a 40-year low in gun crime. But the average Democrat doesn't know that. They've never been faced with that fact. You can feed them FBI statistics all day, but the false premise is already ingrained in their minds. The average uh, right, you know, neocon Republican, especially the evangelicals, oh, there's a war on Christmas, there's a war on Jesus. Well, no, there's not. It's a false premise. But if you get them to believe the false premise, their perception changes entirely. This is how the game works. This is how propaganda works in the modern election system. Now, in the past, it used to be, oh, here, I'll give you a shot of whiskey if you vote for this candidate. Oh, here, let's do some gerrymandering. Oh, you're voting for Mr. X? I think you should vote for Mr. Y. You wouldn't want to lose your kneecaps. That's the way it used to be in the old days. Then people realized it was far easier to just use faulty premises. And the media helpfully does this on a literally daily basis to the entire population. Doesn't he, Even the libertarian media is guilty of this from time to time. You create a faulty premise, and then you dig for material, usually emotionally charged, which enforces that faulty premise and the natural deduction of reasoning thereof 
in the minds of the people that you're seeking to affect. Again, like gun control. We are at a 40-year low in gun crime. There is no gun crime epidemic. But if you state to people who don't know any better that we've got a gun crime epidemic and pair that with all these videos of people getting shot or police shootings or tales of cartel money laundering and all in the drug war and stuff, you can certainly get them not to look any further than your very uh, surface reporting. It's very, very elementary and it's usually delivered in an elementary school fashion as far as the English that's used, by the way, in the mainstream media as well. You simply create that little surface and it's like a veneer. It's like a facade. All of, out before you, you see a desert. Cover it over with some topsoil, plant some grass and put some sprinklers up. It no longer looks like a desert now, does it? California is guilty of this, by the way. Most of these nice green looking areas in California, sprinklers. Sprinklers and topsoil, that's all it is. Below is a bunch of desert sand. It's still a desert underneath, but you've just created a facade. The average person isn't gonna dig any deeper. They'll say, oh, this looks like we should have a farm here. Water must be plentiful. Everything's so green and colorful. There's flowers and palm trees and, and all these th wonderful things, some succulents. It looks very vibrant. It looks very alive. I think and then they start tilling the soil up. Of course, they realize, oh, shit, there's nothing but sand underneath it. That's how modern politics works. Truth be damned. Truth doesn't matter in modern politics. When b sites like PolitiFact, when they try to analyze whether a candidate has told the truth or not. Now, I've stated before, and I state this again emphatically, PolitiFact itself lies constantly. They don't lie in the actual ratings that they give things. They do lie by omission, frequently. That is, that they will fact, if, if Trump, PolitiFact is obviously left-leaning, I think that's clear. Uh, and it's not an endorsement of Trump, by the way, to say this. If Trump says a hundred things and 50 of them are true and 50 of them are false and Clinton does the same thing, PolitiFact will fact check all 50 truthful statements Clinton has made and maybe 10 of the false ones and 50 false statements by Trump, maybe 10 of the true ones. And thus it looks like Trump is just a total chronic liar and Hillary generally tells the truth. In reality, they're about the same. It's a lie by omission. It's simple mathematics. It's a simple lie by omission, and people gobble it right up. They don't even realize it's happening because the average person doesn't look through rally after rally, speech after speech, ad after ad, uh, news interview after news interview to document every goddamn thing that Trump and Clinton have said. You'd, you'd never sleep. You'd have to do that if you truly wanted to fairly know what was true and what was false. You'd have to cut out anything that's just subjectively one or the other and then fact check every statement made by that candidate on an objective basis. Is it true or is it false in a literal sense? And it just doesn't happen. PolitiFact doesn't do that. None of these sites do that. Left or right, it doesn't matter. It's like if the right-wing media, if Drudge or Breitbart again, if they want to cast Hillary as a chronic liar, they will fixate on the lies that she's told. They won't talk about the time she's told the truth to the point at which she could say the sky is blue and it would be completely ignored. In the minds of the people reading these elements of the media, she never tells the truth. There's not a single true thing she's ever said. And in that same media, Trump generally is a likable, ethical individual, made a lot of money very easily because he's talented, has great ideas, never did anything wrong, and isn't making any mistakes. And likewise, if you read Salon, or if you go to Being Liberal, or you watch MSNBC, Hillary Clinton tells the truth chronically, almost in an unavoidable fashion. She's as healthy as a horse. She has never done anything wrong. She's the most decorated, celebrated, able person who's ever run for the presidency, and her opponent is the Antichrist. Clearly, neither when you get a, situ a situation, especially one with emotionally charged language attached, in which two people are compared and contrasted in a dichotomous fashion, by some third party. And they come to the conclusion that one of them is all manner of good things and the other is all manner of bad things. You can be damn sure that what you're witnessing is propaganda. This is exactly this is what happened in World War II. Listen to the German media. The Fuhrer is strong. The Fuhrer is so smart. He's a genius. You know, we're going to win this war easily. We're the Ubermensch. Everything we do is great. 
and those other fuckers over there, they're all controlled. You know, Jewish banks control them, and Jews this and Jews that. Gypsies running around. There's lots of gay people, and they, like, don't kill the gays anymore, which is terrible. And all of these things. You listen to Western media, they'd say the same thing in reverse. All those Nazis, they're killing everyone in their path. They drink blood. They got an electric chair that kills 20,000 people at the same time. They, they render the bodies down and make, like, soap and candles out of them and stuff like that. And we're just so virtuous, we don't kill anyone who's innocent. We're fighting for liberty. It's propaganda, and it's never true. Any time that you witness it, World War I was even worse. Hell, I think, didn't the British cut the transatlantic cable at one point to keep the Germans from uh, telling the United States the atrocities that the, the, the non-central uh, powers were uh, using? against German towns. I believe so, if I remember correctly. I'd have to dig up a source for that. Either way, you get the point. It's like Napoleon. One person says Napoleon, Satan incarnate. He's literally, before Hitler or Charles Manson, it was Napoleon. Some people said he, literal Antichrist, as in literally, he will end the world. He will take over. He is the firstborn of Satan. Other people say, oh, he's just glorious. Shy. He's trying to crush these uh, but retarded, barbaric Russians and so forth. He's a great guy, and he also had grimoires and stuff. It's propaganda. But it doesn't matter that it's propaganda. It doesn't matter that most of this stuff is a complete lie. It's a, it's a, it's a theater production. Everything that they say is a theater production. It's all illusion. It's like a bunch of smoke and mirrors. It's like watching Houdini perform or something like that. But it doesn't matter. Most people, and I do mean the majority of people, are taken in by it. Their perception has been changed by faulty premises, lies by omission, and in many cases, browbeating, emotionally charged, outright propaganda. You can't think this because it's racist. You can't think that because it's sexist. You can't think this because it's ableist. If you say that, it makes you Satan. If you say this, then it makes you evil. It's like Christians do it all the time. You go back a hundred years, you find all sorts of little white magic grimoires that were accepted by all of Christendom. They had no problem with them. Now, if you were to show that same manuscript to one of these people, oh, well, that's, that's witchcraft, it's Satanism or something. See how perception has changed? The premise is faulty. The premise itself is logically inconsistent. But once the premise is, is used, once it comes into use by the people in a more organic sense, it doesn't matter if it's faulty anymore. And therefore... Perception matters. Truth really doesn't matter, especially within the realm of politics. It's like watching people squabble over a fucking football team or something. Oh, you Democrats, just socialist, communist, evil pinkos. Oh, no, you want to you hate America. And then you listen to, like, Democrats. Oh, you fucking retarded, ignorant Republican, throwback to the Stone Age, Neanderthal, evangelical Bible thumper. That's what it boils down to. It's just so, I mean, when it gets to that point at which it's basically just a bunch of insults flung around from side to side, it's propaganda. And all of you primarily are being used uh, in the system. The funny thing is, despite the fact that I'm saying this, even those that acknowledge it, realize on a deeper level it's true, will still support these people. Watch, go through this video, watch it, It'll probably be able to crack through your mind, and you'll be convinced that perception is what matters. And truth has gone out the window long, long ago, many, many decades ago, in fact. It hasn't really mattered that much. In fact, I don't know if it ever really did. But it's not going to matter. It's not going to change the way you vote. It's not going to change the way you analyze these politicians. Because you still, you've already made up a premise in your own mind as well. You've already got a faulty premise whereby one candidate is a little bit less evil than the other. The more you're convinced that it's an illusion, the smaller that margin gets. But it's always still there, even if it's microscopic and you can barely see it. Oh, Trump's just a little bit better than Hillary. She lies so much. I, just, I know that Trump's lying to me too, but it's just so open. I just can't support her. Oh, Trump is, you know, I know Clinton's not great, she lies a lot, but, you know, Trump, he's a Nazi or he's Hitler or something. I've got to vote for Hillary. That's what you will, when you go to the voting booth, most of you will have that internal dialogue literally going on. And that's literally what you will end up doing. You'll still vote for the same person nine times out of ten. Uh, it would be very difficult to convince even a small number of people otherwise. That's about all. Peace out.